everyone, Sophia here for MyGreatChallenge.blogspot.com. Welcome back to the 12 days of Christmas. This is day three. I am going to my Weight Watchers meeting. So it's about nine o'clock in the morning. I already showered. I desperately attempted to do my nails, but of course I brushed and now I gotta redo it again because they all, you know, messed up. Uh, on today's menu, or agenda rather, after my uh, Weight Watchers meeting, I'm going to take you to TG Maxx because I have to replace the gloves that Le Chief ate and uh, I had previously purchased them there. So I'm hoping they have the exact same pair. Um, they were wool, red gloves, I'll show them to you. And uh, see if I can find some hoodies for my husband because he said that's all he wanted for Christmas. I did get him a couple of other things. I can talk about it on video because otherwise he'll know. So after that, once I come back from uh, TJ Maxx, I have to go to the bank. Then I'm going to disappear for a while because I have to edit um, yesterday's 12 days of Christmas, day number two. And in the afternoon after lunch, I'm going to finish the Christmas trees and probably um, most of the house. I'll do the outside tomorrow. And uh, what else? It's going to be a slow day for me. I was really, really tired yesterday. I don't know if you've noticed. I couldn't even take the light in the kitchen. I was just wiped yesterday. So, yeah, I'm going to take it easy today. The tree itself takes about two to three hours to put together because I have so many ornaments, a lot of them. And then I have to do general cleaning. You know, the regular stuff, the rotation of the laundry, folding clothes, bringing them back upstairs, mopping the floor, whatever. All right, I see you in a bit. Um, as far as the Weight Watchers meeting is concerned, I have zero hope whatsoever that I've lost any kind of weight, not even an ounce, because I was very bad this week, except for the last two days, because I've been filming. Um, and I don't know why we say we've been bad or we've been good, because really that's not what it's about I wasn't bad you know I'm not a bad person I just couldn't stay on track with it and um, I had to adjust to being home by myself throughout the week and you get bored a little bit and when you get bored you eat you snack a lot and it didn't help that we actually ate a lot of very rich food like cheeses and bread that seemed to rotate around that kind of food so yeah I'm going to my meeting thinking that at best, I maintained the weight from last week. And just to give you a little sample, this is a fruit smoothie that I made in my uh, Nutribullet. I'll have to give you some recipes here and there. This is just a banana, blueberries, strawberries, and a cup of almond milk. One point for the entire thing. I'm not drinking it now because that's about a pound worth just in weight. And I am not about to put a pound on that scale. i see you in a bit. All right, I'm back from my meeting. I'm hoping you can hear me because there's a lot of wind where I'm at. Uh, it was a very, very good meeting. You'll have to watch the update uh, for week, uh, I don't know, I think it's uh, 19. Yeah, it's week 19. So you have to watch that because I'm going to talk about a lot of changes that the Weight Watchers corporate headquarters have made. Some of them I like, some of them I think are okay. Uh, missing stuff, but otherwise very good changes. And uh, yeah, I'll talk about it in the updates, but right now I am going to TJ Maxx. These are nice, but that's not the kind that I had before. Alright, so these are the gloves that I had bought the other day, but mine were red. And these are purple. I think I'm just going to have to... Unless they have red, I don't see them. So I'm going to have to go ahead with the purple ones.
So I'm done with TJ Maxx and uh, I did purchase two of those hooded sweater zipper thing for my husband because that's what he said he wanted for Christmas. Um, you've seen them. I like TJ Maxx. I mean, I, to be honest, for those of you who don't live in the US and don't know about TJ Maxx, it's a uh, um, high-end brand discount store. So you get, I mean, I don't know about high-end, but you, you get like different good brands um, like to Harry things like this and you get them for like 40% off and uh, one of the hoodies that I purchased was actually way more than 40% off I think it was like 60 70% so I thought it was a good deal because they are good quality none of them are made in the US but what am I gonna do about that I mean nobody makes anything here anymore Pff, really um, I was a good girl I did not buy the mugs I wanted those mugs for so long in particular the fox one and the little uh, um, raccoon and then there was another one that was an owl they have different animals but I really wanted one of them and I didn't I did however purchase some tea so I'm gonna show you what I got uh, for tea and the gloves you've seen I bought the uh, purple one because I have red but anyway I'm on my way to the post office to check what's in the PO box for today and then I'll go home have breakfast it's 11 o'clock 11 25 uh, right now so yeah it's been, I've been out for two hours I'm gonna go have my breakfast and then like I said I'll disappear for a while because I have to edit and post a video um, for day two I guess yeah day two so I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that but this is a main um, Central Avenue in my area and in about one second, you're gonna pass in front of Yogi Berra's house. Right here, that's Yogi Berra's house. For those of you who don't know, Yogi Berra is a famed baseball player here in the US. And over there is the old psychiatric hospital, which is abandoned. And apparently, I think they were featured in an episode of Ghost Hunters. I'm not sure, but apparently there's ghosts in there. I would love to go and visit, for sure. I'm back home time for breakfast I'm having a full cup of that cereal I bought yesterday from the silver palette it's uh, grain berry brain flakes and they say that three quarter of a cup is uh, three points so I put one cup so I'm gonna count that as four points I'm adding blueberries to it that's zero point almond milk one cup that's one point so that bowl of cereal is gonna be five points and then just because I know that's not enough for me I'm gonna have one of those little original Swiss Weight Watchers wedges, um, which is like a little, like a laughing cow thing, right? Little wedges, and these are one point. So breakfast is six, so I'm at seven points so far. That leaves me with 19 points for lunch and dinner. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. I finished editing. It took a little bit longer than I expected. I'm having lunch. Uh, the kids are gonna have the leftover pizza. They don't eat pizza every day, okay? I know it looks like they do, but they don't. Tonight, I'm probably gonna make a roast chicken. I just wanna quickly share what I'm having for lunch with you. This is my lunch. I'm having same thing that I did yesterday night. I'm having a salad, so I'm counting it as zero point. I'm having a soup um, that's gonna be five and a half. And some of those little crackers here, they are from Mary's Corn Crackers, Black Pepper Crackers. These are 13 uh, crackers for three points, I think. So I have about one point worth of crackers just to have something to munch on. My husband is having the same thing, uh, but I'm adding a slice of um, the pizza that we had yesterday, which is uh, still in there. It's this pizza right here, the DiGiorno one um, with the vegetables and the uh, olives and whatnot. When I'm, once I'm done with lunch, I am finally tackling the ornaments on the tree. Um, I'm just gonna quickly show you what kind of ornaments I'm talking about. Then I'll decorate the tree and then I'll give you a quick tour of what it looks like and then we'll have to make dinner. Look, it's so nice. I'm having lunch with my husband. You're enjoying lunch. What are you doing this weekend? Working. He's freelancing. 
It takes all day long. He's like a prisoner in his tower upstairs. It's um, it's more about the deadlines. Yeah. Yeah, people. Um, I think people that that hire this don't always recognize like how much work goes into it. Well, so why they, don't you tell us what you do? Yeah. <laughs> I do motion graphics, um, but they don't always recognize how much work goes into it, and so they impose um, very tight deadlines um, with gargantuan tasks. And and you know a lot of the times the um, the people that hire you, uh, you know, they want the moon, the stars, and and the sky, and and you know it's they see really cool, sexy sexy stuff on television and that's what they want for their you know promotions so basically what Scott is telling you right now is that when I started editing I believed that I was gonna take it was gonna take only one hour and he ended up taking two and a half hours so you never sit at the computer thinking that you're gonna be done like that there's always work to do. I'm looking at all of you guys' comments for the latest video. I'm very thankful for all of your support and your comments. I've been trying to answer every single one of them, but the outpour of comments has been so gigantic that it would take me like four hours of sit down. So for those of you I did not answer yet, it will happen, just not right away. But again, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you. I am done with lunch. I'm going to do the decor on the Christmas trees. Pass the tea, please, hon. And just to give you a heads up, this tea sucks. It absolutely sucks. I had a cup. My cup is right here. And this is how much I drank. I don't like it at all. I basically paid $6 for a very knit tea. And that's cool because I like the tin, but the uh, tea is horrible. All right, uh, quarter to three in the afternoon on Saturday. I am ready to put the Christopher Ratko ornaments, yes, on the tree. And then we'll do that tree over there that I have to lit up, right? Did you plug it in? No. Can you plug it in? Where's it off? Over there, on the other side. Oh, right, I forgot. Here. I plug it in. The white one. Oh, okay. Any time now. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yay! Let there be light. <laughs> yeah. Let there be light. And Edward is ready to go for his run. Yeah. You're shooting for your record today? No. Um, yeah. Yeah? Under 46 minutes? I guess, yeah. All right, bye. So I just opened my Christopher Ratko ornament box and I realized that I have this big bow right here that I had put on top of the tree last year. I had forgotten about it. So I can remove the one that I have all the way on top and switch with this one, which is a much better looking bow anyway. And here are the ornaments. So now, for those of you who've never watched my Christmas tours and videos before, I collect Christopher Ratko ornaments. And the only ones, for one tree only, and the only ones I collect are the snowmen. So here's one. And they all have names. I don't remember the names of every single one of them. But I remember the years. This one I got in 2004. And then, let me see, let's just pick one randomly. This is the centers around the world. Ah, I believe this is the one I got last year with the cupcake. And they are all cute. I love them. They are, they take seven days to be made. Um, they used to be made in Poland. I believe they are no longer made in Poland. No, they are made in uh, China, of course, because, you know, I don't know. I don't appreciate that at all. Here's another one. Um, I'm looking for my favorite one. I bet you it's this one. You want to bet this is my favorite one right there? Yeah. You think so? Is yep, it? it is. Oh, that is so cute. Um, anyway, that's my favorite noise one. I'm gonna be sure. And I found this note to myself from last year that says fixed top. What is wrong with the top? Oh, I got to uh, reinsert the top right here. It's got a little crooked. Okay. All right. Well, good thing I put a note to myself for it. <laughs> I 
Amazing. All right, I do have some organizational skills. And all the red goes up. And this is what it looks like. So to put them on, I use the uh, the big green hooks, right? But what I do is that to make sure, first of all, you got to check to make sure that this part right here is tight and your ornament is not falling off. Because these, like I said, are collectible. I get one every year. And the first one was this one. I got it in 2000. And ever since, for Christmas, if I get only one thing, that's what I get. I get a Christopher Radcliffe and Almond. So I'm very happy if I just get that. But anyway, so you got to make sure that these are tight enough. So sometimes they become loose. So before you break it or lose your ornament, what you need to do, like I did for this one right here, which I just repaired, I actually put um, a super glue on it. So I replaced it, you know, the two little springs are inside and then I tighten the entire top the crown here and then I covered the whole thing with super glue this one is not going anywhere a couple of years ago I had to do the same thing with this one right here which is the one on the snow bear um, on the polar bear so that's glued as well I'm suspecting that eventually I'm gonna have to do that with most of them um, so that's number one so you gotta make sure that this is really really tight and then with that green loop what I do is that I loop it on this part right here, the little star, which would be the hook, I guess. And then the part that's over it, I just loop it around like a spiral, the branch. Sometimes you have an ornament like this one right here that's just too heavy. So what I do is that I tie it around two branches. You see there's one here branch and then there's another one. So that way it has a little bit more support. The last thing I want is for any of these ornaments to fall. So now I'm looking at it and I see a couple of holes here. This one is misplaced. Um, these are not Christopher Radko, but they, they do fit nice. So what you want to do is kind of like move your branches a little bit and then eventually if you just don't like the way it looks, you just remove this one, put it somewhere else. Um, I have some empty spaces here at the bottom. I have four more of these um, red and white bulbs or um, globe ornaments and these I believe I got at Kmart they are the Sandra Lee or Sandra D I'm not sure one of the Sandra's ornaments but I'm out of hooks and just in case I need some for my other tree I'm gonna go to the Walgreens and um, get some hooks for the ornaments and add the missing, you know, the round ones here just to fill it up a little bit. But anyway, so let me just give you a quick tour, even though there's going to be another video for that. This is the one I got when William was born. It's a little baby um, brushing his teeth. This is the one I got when Edward was born in 2002. Um, let me see, there's one in there that plays the saxophone. Which one is it? Where's the saxophone playing guy? This one I think is called Dasher Dapper. And let's see, uh, ice skating snowman. But these are the frosty snowmen, and I really like the jollies, which are the ones with the big round belly. Oh, here's a saxophone playing one. This is the one I got when Edward started playing saxophone. And um, this one actually I purchased myself at TJ Maxx out of all places, and they no longer carry them. And this is what it looks like. From far away, I'm gonna remove, turn off the ceiling light. Here we go. What do you say, Willie? Do you like it? Yes. Yeah. Are you ready for me to do the big tree? Yep. What's your brother doing? He's running. He's running? Okay. All right, that's done. And I have a little light here. This one, I put a candle in it. I have to light it up. And this is one of those, um, like this. There we go. So that looks a little bit more festive and cozy with the flickering light. Very, very nice. Every year I say I should put some light on the uh, mantle and I never do. And I think it's because I don't want it to be overwhelmed. I want it to be kind of understated. But with the um, candles inside those mercury jars, it actually looks much, much better. So I tell you what, what I'm going to do is while I go to Walgreens, I'm going to make sure that I buy some tea light candles as well. Hello. How you doing? Never mind. Just like I do every year, I'm going to show you how I proceed. I put, I still have to tie it um, to the banister. I start with the flowers. 
then the feathers, then the animal ornaments, then the uh, um, round ornaments, and then I pluck stuff in the middle. So it's a, it's a very complicated thing that takes a long time. All right, I'm back from Walgreens. It is 4.30. He's having evil double cream Oreos, uh, and I can't have any. Okay. Yeah, all right, cookies. Um, I'm going to have a yogurt. Let me see what's in the fridge. Oh boy, do I need to do grocery shopping tomorrow. Uh, all right, Greek yogurt, same one, two points. I have 13 and a half left, minus two. That's 11 and a half for dinner. Ooh, it just passed. December 10th, do you think it's still good? Yeah? Do you want one? <laughs> right. Do you think they're still good? I don't know. Two days? I think they are. It's time to start with flowers and feathers. And I'm so glad I did all that organization before. Flowers and feathers? Yep. So I got feathers right here. And then I got the ones I grabbed from grandma's over here that I added to that. So I'm going to leave them here anyway. Right, and I need to start with the big green flowers. So I have big flowers like these um, that need to be opened up, and they all have uh, I don't know if you can see that they have glitter, right? So I have these, and then there's the gold ones like this, and then this purple ones like that, and then I have some silk flowers. So what I do is that I kind of alternate them in a diagonal like this throughout the whole tree all the way up and then the ornaments go in between so here we go we got one row here that's going up all around like this there's another one here and then there's another one at the bottom so from far away this is what it looks like so far right and i have them all the way up here so now the next ones are the uh, brown, uh, what do you call this, hydrangeas. They also have glitter on them. I mean, it's too bad you can't really see on camera, but they have glitter on the edges. And what I do is that I use them kind of like in between to fill empty spaces. Okay, so stage two, and the hydrangeas in between. All right, I just want to give you a side note about the tree, by the way. It's something that I've been working on for over 12 years now. It's going on. Uh, yeah, a little bit over 12 years. I add on to it every single year. So this is not something that happened overnight. This was not, um, you know, one of those trees you get in a box, though those can be absolutely gorgeous as well. It's just that <clears throat> I wanted a very specific tree and I've been working at it for a long time. And like I said, every year something new happens to it. So um, I know it's, it's, I mean, to me, it looks absolutely beautiful. But again, um, it's something that's a work in progress and that has taken a lot of time to put together. So it's not something like you just, you know, go to the store and you get all the stuff and that's it, you get a tree. I mean, it really is um, a lot of work, a lot of thought process going on. Um, whenever you see one of those that's kind of like looking awkward, you can, you know, remove it, reshape it, reopen it, like right now it's dangling. So I have to make sure... I actually tie it to one of the branches because otherwise, see, bam, it fell. So it's not just about placing them. Now, the reason why I twist the uh, lights around the uh, uh, tree branch is also because I can use those little loops to tie in ornaments like these. Like right now, it's perfectly stable. So just open it a little bit. Um, you got to be very careful because every year they're going to lose some glitter. So you want to orient them in a way that you can really appreciate it and see it and sometimes you get a light like this so you want to put it more towards the center like that so that way you get to see um, at night you get to see the uh, uh, glitter and then you just play around with it until you pretty much have it and then at that point you can put the uh, ornaments and next are feathers. I have this kind of feather that's dangling. So these, they have to poke from the outside. Definitely need some kind of clip or, um, you know, hook to tie them secure. Um, the cat loves these, obviously. So there's these. I have a whole bunch. And then 
more in the feathers category, um, I have these birds of paradise that I found, I think, at um, Pier and Port. Yeah, Pier and Port. So I have some red ones, and then I have some purple ones and green ones that are like these. So these usually I put on the top and I always figure out a way to orient them so that you can really see the uh, peacock um, feather. Um, because remember, I mean, this is all about, you know, placement and making sure that all of your ornaments are being showcased. Um, this is a little teardrop that I got, I think, this year at the World Market. And I don't know if I bought one or two. I may have purchased two. can't find the other one. So, yeah, we'll see. All right, so you see the feathers are in and they're dangling outside of the tree to give it volume. Then I have those sticks right here. I don't know what you call them, twigs, I guess. So they're a little bit everywhere. And again, you can't really see it because of the light. But basically this is what it looks like. You see the uh, danglers. So from far away, it's starting to look um, full and with a lot of volume, which is really what I like about this tree. Now and next I have to place the uh, three um, birds of paradise that I have. And those I usually put them all the way on top over here. Kind of like a rounded, like a crown. All right, shaping up. Uh, we got these birds all around like this. I wish I had a fourth one. I don't know if they still make them. I have the uh, other ones that are on clips. And what I do with those, um, the prettiest one I put in the middle, and that's the blue one right here. But I do bend the uh, branch, because remember, it's these are on wire. And that's the reason why I use an artificial tree, because you can manipulated a regular tree you would have to wire the branch and do a whole bunch of stuff that's that's nonsense that way you know I know what goes where so I orient it in a way where it kind of like falls this way you see how the tree is call me maniac I mean I know this sounds so CD but you know you should see the amount of time I spend gazing at my tree <laughs> once it's up um, then I have these danglers here that um, I bought at a boutique in Cleveland I think so I have red one and then I have a blue one right here, and then there's another blue somewhere. Where did I put it? Oh, right here. And then I think I have another red one somewhere else. I just probably misplaced this. These got tangled, so I got to make sure I detangle them. Um, and I think it looks like there's a feather that's coming off, so I got to fix that as well. All right, so again, a little view from the back. This is what it looks like so far. And I'm done with feathers and flowers this is the topper which i'm not going to put up yet so it's going to go on the side this box is empty and i'm moving on uh, what is that these are the round ornaments these are tassels and icicles and then the other ones are ribbons i think i have yeah animal ornaments uh, now, wait, I'm missing some. Oh, I had it right here. Okay, so I'm moving on to the next ones. All right, well, I have most of the ornaments in. I have the topper on right here. I still have to do more. What's up? Okay. You like it? Yeah. Eh? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mom, All right, I don't like touch this. Don't Mom, touch the topper. Yeah. I like this. You like these. these? Okay, but I'm not done. I still have to put those. All right, so uh, ornaments, I'll give you a tour later on. Just letting you know, what I do is that I put the ornaments that have the most gold, that are the most reflective, on the inside, you see that, of the tree, because they reflect the light. And what happens when you do that, like you see how this is, um, it really gives depth to your tree. Most people put ornaments around on the outside. Don't touch. I'm just touching the um, I put them all the way inside. So there's a little bit of everything. And again, I'll do a, a Christmas um, house tour with some close-ups. But basically, this is what it looks like so far. And I still have a few ornaments to put in. These are like uh, glass grapes. I usually put them at the bottom because they dangle. And then I have uh, more of the uh, tree topper over here. Then I have two ornaments that I purchased at the World Market. It's a camel and a elephant. 
to replace the ones that broke a couple of years ago because I mean they're similar they're not the same but for some reason I can't find them I don't know what I did with them and I'm very upset so <laughs> I'm almost done I'm gonna do this and then I'll do the nativity scene I still have dinner uh, to make matter of fact it's almost six o'clock it's quarter to six right now I'm going to turn the oven on for my chicken roast I really don't know why I put myself through all this nonsense it's 6 30 I still haven't started my chicken the tree is done. Here we go. I'm giving you a quick pan. Um, there will be another video for the whole Christmas store with close-ups and all of that. So the topper is done, if you can see it, right? And I still haven't. Um, I've started cleaning a little bit, but all of those boxes I gotta go back downstairs. I still didn't put the rest of the uh, round ornaments there, but I did put the candles and the. Um, frosted and mercury glass. I'm going to turn off the ceiling so so you can see what it looks like. See? It's very, very pretty. It's subtle. I really like it. Um, yeah, so here it is. There's nothing more magical, I think, than a Christmas tree. And I really, really like having this one here in the corner. Um, this is pretty much done. I still have to bring the chair downstairs. Um, have some cleaning to do here. I brought my uh, Christmas basket. It's too bad on the video. You just can't see the sparkle. Um, but anyway, it's got like frosted beads. It's probably not going to stay in the middle of the table. Uh, I may put it over there and I still have to clean that. This is all the outside stuff. I still haven't done an activity over there. And uh, what else? And then the kitchen needs to be cleaned before I do my chicken. I have the oven on. And uh, yeah. Ugh. It's crazy. No, it's seven o'clock. I better put that chicken in the oven now. All right, I'll see you later. I kid you not, this took seven minutes. Um, I have a Tyson organic chicken. Yeah, because Tyson started doing organic chicken now. I ain't cut the legs or the wing like I did for the turkey because, I mean, really, it's a small bird. I don't have to worry about that. It's, um, it's easy enough to eat that way. Uh, I stuffed it with oranges. Okay, so there's uh, one full orange in there. It's uh, sitting or lying, I don't know, sitting, I guess, on a bed of uh, potatoes with uh, the skin on, there's um, onions, right, and there's entire cloves of garlic as well, uh, see that, right here, garlic, these are going to roast in it, I keep the skin, right, because it just comes off right away, and then I drizzled it with um, grapeseed oil, because it sustains higher temperature, than olive oil or vegetable oil. I have oregano leaves, a little bit of garlic powder, and black peppercorn. This little black flakes you see in addition to the uh, oregano. This is going in the oven for 90 minutes. So it will be done 7 or 7, right? It will be done at 8.37. Well, we're eating a little late tonight, but then again, it's Saturday. Here's the chicken. Uh, I was in there for an hour and 45, almost 50 minutes. We have a salad, there's some french fries for the kids, and leftover soup. So the soup again is five and a half. I'm gonna have about four ounces worth of the chicken, so that's nine and a half. And then the salad is zero point, you know, because I only drizzled the dressing. So I have about uh, three points left or so. I may be over by one point, I don't know. Um, but anyway, that's dinner. We're gonna have dinner. Then I'm going to edit a video and go to bed, and I'll see you tomorrow. I hope you enjoyed day three of my 12 days of Christmas. Tomorrow I'm going to be very busy again. I have to winterize the front yard, meaning that I have to cut all the uh, dead branches and whatnot. And then I have to do the outside decor. So like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll talk to you later. Bye! Mm -hmm.